I have the Bobcat out today. It's a 90, late 90s, I think. X325, no, it doesn't even say X on it. I think it's an X325, I'm not sure. But it's leaking. It's leaving puddles everywhere I go. Big ones down right in the middle of the machine. I'm pointing at nothing because I just put it here. Uh, but upon close investigation, I found that it is leaking from this swivel joint all around. I don't know if you can see this. Ooh. Can you see me moving? That seal is blown out. It's just gushing fluid out. It's running down the sides, running down and dripping onto the ground. So we're going to rebuild that today. According to the service manual, we need to remove the entire excavator from the tracks. We're not doing it that way. No, that's not going to work out. So I've got it up on blocks and wood here. And that's so I can get a little bit easier access underneath. Because we're going to disconnect all of the hoses from it, top and bottom, pull out four bolts, and uh, hopefully pull that thing right out of the middle so we can rebuild it. Here we are underneath. We've got these two lines going down. We got these ones going to the tracks, two more going to the tracks. And way up top, we've got a line that's going out to the blade there. There's one way up on the other side. So we're just taking those off, marking them so we know which ones go where, and then four bolts holding that in. I'm gonna start by taking off everything on the bottom. The theory is it won't drip on me quite as bad, but it's gonna, it's gonna drip. I don't know. I'll start with one side, then I'll do the last side, and maybe crack them all loose first so I can spend the last time. Yeah, let's try that. I'm gonna crack them all so that they're just loose, and then that'll minimize the time I have to spend down here. Uh, there's really no great way to show you this because I am laying on my back under the machine. So I can't really get a camera. Even then, it's just a time lapse of me disconnecting hoses you can do that um, but the one thing I will point out is I'm gonna do it with a paint marker but uh, you can get different colored zip ties or whatever mark those lines really really well because if you hook something up backwards or wrong it's not gonna do what you think it should do I got the hoses out and sure enough it's probably gonna drain the entire tank so it's gonna take a while so I got a nice clean bucket and just letting it drain into there I have all hoses disconnected except for this one way down here. I cannot get my wrench on it. So I'm going to take out the bolts that are holding that whole thing in and uh, hopefully I'll be able to move it up. I've also loosened this. This just kind of, I guess, keeps it centered back and forth so it spins with the machine. Um, and I unscrewed it but now I'm hitting this back plate. So I'm wondering if this was supposed to stay still and this is supposed to turn out. So I'm going to tighten that back up, hold this solid with something, and then try to just turn the outer bolt and see if I can get it out that direction. Yeah, looks like the bolts holding in from the bottom are three quarter. Everything up here has been variations of uh, mostly 11 sixteenths. And if you don't have a, a center wrenches like that, and you own one of these, uh, you go out to Harbor Freight and pick one up because I use them a lot. Well, kind of with the bolt. This isn't threaded, it's just the lock nut to keep it from coming out. Didn't know that. So I held that still and unthreaded it from there. That worked. All right, I'm going to go pop out those four bolts underneath. Hopefully, be able to raise it up, maybe stick a block of wood under it uh, while I get that last stinking hose off of there. That worked. With that bolt out, I was just able to move it over to the side just a little bit, and I got the last hose off of there. So now, I'm going to try to lift it out of here somehow. Let's see how this goes.
Got it. This part is huge. Much bigger than I thought it was. I don't know, it looks smaller in there. I had to remove this block and loosen these hoses and take off this one that went to the front of the motor that spins it. And that gave me enough clearance to get it out of here. Oh man, I got some gunk in my connectors. I'm gonna have to clean those real good. Darn it. Got it kind of cleaned up, all the big stuff. I'm gonna take this end apart. See what we got after that. It's like uh, 13 millimeter, six of them. What you need to do is take off all of these guys and then the whole thing will slide down through according to the service manual. So I've marked each one with the letter. If it's directional, which way it goes. So R's going there, E's just regular. And C is pointing that way. I'm gonna take all of these off. I'll leave these two on. Take this one off so it doesn't catch. And then uh, it says to put it in a vise and pound it out of there gently. Let's see how that goes. Check this out. That's pretty clever. Trying to take this off and oh, it hits right there. Well, they've made a little cutout right in this little groove. And you can line it up and swing it out. That was nice of them. It says I should be able to hit it off the bottom. It's coming out the bottom. Oh man, ah, oh. there's my top seal. It is brittle. to replacing the seals now you can just replace this one like that because that's the one that's leaking it's coming up through and then you have another one which is more or less just to keep the dirt out of it that's leaking it's pushing up okay but the kit comes with all of these seals so I figure since I'm here I'm just gonna replace all of the seals You just got to dig one out without scratching it. I'm just using a very small screwdriver. And eventually I can dig it out and pull the old one out. And then you're not done. Under that... is an o-ring so we're going to pull that o-ring out Get that o-ring right off there you go new o-ring goes in like that and then the new seal goes on which it's really tight. It says to stretch them, but I'm worried about stretching them too much. Five more to go. Oh, and then the main seal after that. The manual says to cook these in 130 degree hydraulic oil for three minutes. And I did 
I didn't really notice any perceivable distance or difference. But uh, I got the top seal in. I got three of those. You kind of get the idea on that one. Now I'm trying to pull the top ring out, and I was able to just tap a screwdriver in, got it under there, and now I'm twisting, and it's coming out. Uh, yes. Yep. It's coming. Whew, almost. There we go. I'm just gonna tap the new one in with a hammer. New seal tapped in there pretty easily. So, at this point, I'm gonna finish that up. I'm gonna clean that out one more time, clean that off one more time, use the sneak fluid, kind of pre-lubricate everything, and tap it in with a hammer. Mail it. It's going in. Not really fighting me. Cleaning it as I go. Lubing it with the full fluid. Every seal as I go in. So far, so good. Not bad. Just hitting it with that rubber mallet. It's back together. I put all the bolts in the bottom. Kept going around every other. Tighten those up to uh, 18 foot pounds. And then you have to take test the breakaway torque on that. It should be less than 90. Uh, what's it look for? 50 to 90. And it was stiff the first time, but now it moves pretty good. So I am happy with that. Now I'm trying to remember how it goes in the machine because I want to line that spot up with the front of the machine. But I don't remember how it goes. So I'm going to go look at that, test fit it. I mean, it'll be easy to tell because these hoses on the bottom are going to want to naturally go one way and these ones are going to want to go another way. So it'll be easy to tell. So I'm going to go drop those in and reconnect hoses. Ran out of time last night, got distracted. It is now the next morning. It is completely back together. All the hoses are hooked back up. Nothing appears to have leaked overnight, but it's hard to tell because there's fluid everywhere. So I'm going to fire this up, swivel it around, and, and see if it's leaking. Everything seems fine. I'm gonna clean it up, putting the rest of the panels in and everything. Uh, also, I'm missing the skid plate that goes underneath. Never realized there was supposed to be one there, so I'm gonna get a custom one made, or unless I can get order one. But it looks like just a square sheet of steel or something, so probably get one of those to protect the bottom of that swivel joint. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Keep watching the channel. If it starts leaking again, I'll I'll let you know. Looks promising. Never did that before. I guess it's not too bad of a job. It's that upper seal that was really leaking. So, All right, well, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every viewer and every subscriber, especially those members. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate the support. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you here for another video on three-day weekend.